So what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? T today we're here with our sister, uh, Jay Essence. Um, our hello, sister hello. is coming live and in, in, in on location in Rwanda, correct? I am in Rwanda. Yes, I am. Awesome, awesome. So, um, you know, so tell us just a little bit. I mean, are you um, originally from the U.S.? You know, I love how people say, are you originally from the U.S.? Do we really know where we're originally from? I know that my ancestry has brought me and I am an American citizen mm -hmm. because of our history. And Correct. so, yes, I've spent majority of my life born California. You got Texas, Oklahoma, went to school in Florida. I'm seeing the HBCU shirt. I'm going to shout that out all day. And so I would say culturally, yes, my roots, I am rooted into the concept of being an American a black African-American. All right. Yeah. Cause like I said, we, we have a, you know, like I said, yes, we definitely, you know, are, are, are disconnected in a lot of our history. Uh, but we have definitely built a great history and, and we come from a resilient people um, in this land as well. So I, I never mm -hmm. want to, you know, uh, discount our, our great ancestry here. But um, so you say you California, um, so what made you started to look at the continent? Because, you know, usually, you know, in our families, you know, the first time you say, I'm mm -hmm. going to the continent, I'm like, what? You going mm -hmm. way to Africa? Africa? You know? So how, Cal, how did your family you respond? Eat? That's how they responded to me the first time I went. <laughs> um, so actually, um, I will say this one piece. It was not as shocking because in 2008, I actually lived for about six months in Liberia doing work. Oh, and okay. Things. So, and I think the other thing that's beautiful is that parents kind of know their child. And so when things ain't working, they're like, oh, here she go again. Here, here, here she go again. Um, but the truth for me is that it all started with um, about three years ago. And I really was more so about, I just need to leave the U.S. I didn't feel like I was breathing and I couldn't really enunciate it at that time. And it was just like, something's just not working. And I tell the story about coming home and I was in a beautiful home um, by myself going up to like the um, top floor going into a room and it's a white wall and I would sit in the corner and I just want it to be small. I just want it to be forgotten. And um, I would have anxiety attacks, panic attacks. Of course, nobody knows. We wear the mask that grins and lies, that hides our faces, shades our eyes. And um, I was just really just living. And I just didn't know if this was what life was supposed to be. And so um, that was kind of like the mindset that just triggered is there something else? That was really just the thing that started. Is there something else? Is there a way for me to breathe? Is there a way for me to figure out what my name is? Is there a way for me not to feel like everything that I was doing is given to somebody else? Is there a way for me to be seen? Is there a way for me to be heard? Is there supposed to be a purpose? And I think we all fight those things. And I didn't fight necessarily to become significant. I fought to be heard you know, just with my own spiritual journey, like just I want to spend time on my name and do things. And so just through events and different things that actually landed me first to the UAE, which was really good because it gave me a chance to step outside myself and then look back and then say, oh, wow, you know, I was really hustling. I was really grinding. It was just a change of perspective because that's what that first breath did. And so in the midst of that, it was also about what do I want my life to be? And I was just like, I can't retire and still feel this grind. And that's what I was just seeing with everything going on. I was like, okay, how's the economy going to get better? If I'm sitting here struggling now to make check, you know, check to check, when I retire, is that going to look that way? So that's when I was really starting to research and looking at countries to say, where could I retire to and be all right? Where could I be okay? And that's what made me start looking at the continent. So, Okay, so... Mm -hmm. Being on a continent, because some people don't, you know, I see since a lot of people been going there, you know, it's it's a lot of information out there, but yes. some of it's not practical information. And then, you know, people may hear you're there, but they don't really know the, the, the full scope of how to live life on a continent because it's not America and you can't go there yes. with. Well, in America, we do this like you need to no. kind of throw all that in America. We do this away. I yeah. mean, is that is that safe to say? Well, I'm going to sit here and say, um, I don't know if you realize that you kind of start sneaking into 
um, something I've created. So this is actually month two we've created. I created uh, Jay Essence, uh, My Cousin Connection, which mm -hmm. is a website that is for Black expats, um, especially looking to relocate to Rwanda. And what we do is we provide factual information. We kind of just get through all the fluff. And if you want to go, this is what your visa situation should be. These are the visas you qualify for. This is um, what this looks like. These are the neighborhoods. This is about the estimated parts of costing. Um, and so we do a lot of information-based res um, research and details. And I kind of like to think about it like when you had your you know, cities back in the day, you had that black newspaper, you know, and mm -hmm. this is where we go to get that information. And so that was the whole purpose and concept of my cousin connection. Also, my YouTube channel is I just be authentic with telling the story of what my journey is. And what my conversation always is, is that Rwanda for me is my journey. It doesn't have to always be yours, but do not be afraid to step out and figure out your journey. Because the key thing is, is if you're itching to look and you're researching, that means there's a quest inside of you. And sometimes when the warrior goes on the quest, they don't know exactly where they end up, but it's about the journey that they had to go on just to get to the place. So go ahead and go. But if you're really researching and looking, we have My Cousin Connection that is right there to help give you information and guidance. And we have people that talk to each other. We have it for people who are currently living here. We communicate and talk about different things and people who are trying to come. And it's called My Cousin Connection because I don't know about you, brother, but I always seem to have a family member somewhere. So, you know, you go someplace and be like, and your, your daddy say, oh, you got a cousin over there. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody ever told me I had no cousin. You know, right. and so that's the thing. You got family no matter where you sit down or stand up. And that was the whole purpose of me kind of creating that in my small time here is creating at least that connection to turn around and say, hey, you got family. Yeah, and, and the biggest thing that, that, you know, I've given people advice on is, you know, if you're going to go to the continent, mm -hmm. go to English-speaking countries first. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the reason why I say that is because, you know, some people make the mistake, just in my opinion, going to a country that doesn't speak any kind of English. Yep. Instance, a lot of Black Americans, you know, uh, they're going to Tanzania, and mm -hmm. Tanzania is very serious about Swahili. They don't yes. want to be speaking English over there like that. Mm -hmm. um, now, let's say, for instance, you went to Kenya, you know, mm -hmm. you ain't speaking Swahili over there as well, but it also English is a national language just next yep. door. Or you go to Uganda mm -hmm. or Rwanda yep. or, you know, many, you know, South Africa. Um, could you talk to people about that, you know, that aspect? Because people don't realize well, culture shock is going to happen. Well, let's stop and just be honest. Culture shock happens, period. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you go. Anytime, it's just like going over to somebody's house and spending the night over at their house. It will never be your bed. It right. will never be your mama's food. Like, you have to understand, and I think one of the things that you alluded to, so I'm going to kind of break down first, is that you really need to spend time with yourself to know yourself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people just want to jump in and do and be, and then you get frustrated because things are not there. And sometimes we don't have pretty stories within ourselves. We have, you know, certain reality checks and you should not lash out on an entire country because there's adjustment in there. And so you're right. In order to if you're new at traveling, if you're new at doing this, if you're new and you're just trying to explore, if you were told all the stories about Africa, you need to go to some place that is um, built up and created the way that um, you kind of say you have the English speaking language, you have a lot of buildings that you can use used to that you're you're very comfortable, you can, you know, streets and all of those things, you want to be able to go into a place where you at least can get comfortable and start finding that uncomfortability and getting that exploration down. So I do say you really do have to be able to do your research and really truly know yourself. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, so how many months you been there um, in Rwanda? I am a baby in these streets. I have been here since November 2020. No, yeah, 2020. November 20. I forget the years. It's just all a blur at this point. So it's, um, I'm not even a year yet. Okay. Okay. So um, do you think it Rwanda be a place that you will um, – Say, you know what, that that's that's my spot. Well, I'm gonna be there, or you want to travel to more, you know, uh, places. 
Well, there's a difference when you say that. So Rwanda's home for me. And there's um, a piece where you talk about travel. You can travel, but I would love for Rwanda to be my home base. And that's what Rwanda has done a great job doing in creating laws, infrastructure, the government, and how they turn around and do things here. I like it. I love it. Rwanda is my home. I don't hesitate to say anything. If anybody try to do anything, I will come out that mug kicking and screaming like color purple. No, 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 no. I'm doing the Jennifer Hudson. No way. I'm living. No, I am happy here. Um, I still can travel. I still can visit. But the home base for me is here. And then once again, just in the journey that we all discuss about and stuff, I have family here now. I have people who I would love, talk to, talk to, and all that other stuff. And the blessing for me is that my mother is here now. And it's just been a beautiful thing to be able to kind of pull her away from America and all that COVID stuff, and then be able to have her here and watch her sit on the porch and participate in life and smile and be able to kind of get that peace. And that was another reason I wanted to give her peace before and I don't want to talk all morbid but before she leaves this earth I felt that she has done her work I kiss her on the forehead job well done and thank you for raising me I can never say thank you enough so I wanted to make sure you had a little bit of peace in your life and be able to have places where you could smile and be okay and feel good about the things that you've done and sit back and just enjoy memories and yeah, and, and, and it's about, like I said, finding somewhere that you feel at peace. I, I remember the first time I went to the continent, I went to Ethiopia and I was, uh, oh, went to Mekele. Wow. And, and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and in Mekele, I just, I, it was just so peaceful up there. The people are so friendly. And mm-hmm. that's why I just hate what's happening up there now. It's just mm-hmm. having all these, you know, civil war type of things going on in, in, in the Tigray region. And I just, mm-hmm. it, it saddens me to hear that. Uh, because those people was the ones that, that welcomed us in, you know, and yep. treated me like family and everything, you know, and I just, I just really hate that. So, um, yeah, having a place that you could feel, it's like you said, it's many places throughout the world you could feel at home, you know, mm-hmm. of course, you know, California, America, mm-hmm. yes, that's home, but you can also feel at home on a continent just the same. Cause I firm believe of the moment you step foot out your state and your city, then you left home so you can go anywhere. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Well, I was going to ask you, because you've had the experience, how has your trip now since you've been to the continent, has that changed you? Yes. Yes. I've had two trips to the continent. I went to Ethiopia and Kenya. Um, you know, COVID kind of messed up our third trip. We were supposed to go to South Africa. Oh, that would have been beautiful. Um, yeah, yes. but but we hope Lord bless we'll get there in 2022 because we we kind of mm-hmm. saying we're gonna do it, pick up our trips again in 2022 back to the continent. You know all this mm-hmm. COVID situation and you know it all these different things. Yeah, variants. Yeah, it changed a whole lot of things for I me. Know. Um, you know we have two two of our awesome uh, employees are in Kenya, um, so we have a lot of business in Kenya as well. So, you know, it, it definitely changed me because I've seen the opportunity. You know, my wife loves it. Uh, she went to Nairobi. That's, that's, that's the only place she went to so far, Nairobi, Mombasa, and Kenya. She mm-hmm. loves it. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're definitely planning on getting um, a home on a continent, you know, mm-hmm. as well. So we we that yeah. we, we want to go just back and forth. That's what we want to do, you know. Yes. Um, especially in the summer times here in Houston. I'm in Houston. Uh, I'm so from I, Houston. I know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Well, you outside? know what's hot and humid here. Do you know that. Outside. Oh, come on now. <laughs> yeah, it's but so yes. hot and humid. Yes. But right now, uh, in Kenya, it's their winter right now. So I'm I like, know. oh, I want to start spending my summers in Kenya when we, when we get jumped off, you know, because I, I, I hate this hot weather. Oh my God, I hate it. Humidity. It gets I hate there it. And it sits right there on your neck, and it's like, and then, you know, you got to walk around with the handkerchief and you be trying to, you know, be professional, but you're trying to catch the, the sweat in the slab and all that other stuff. I do understand. And so um, and then you kind of did mention about, you know, by the house of land. And it's like I've been fortunate to do those things as well. Awesome. We actually broke um, ground on um, the bunny farm that I'm actually pulling together um, with them partners and stuff. So, you know, it's just a whole different life. And I love the fact that people are at least exploring who they are and becoming global and, you know, finding these different things of themselves. It's like you said, you have employees and stuff. It's a big difference when your reach is international. Like Mm -hmm. you actually look and say, wow, I can actually have conversations amongst different regions and open up different perspectives and do those things. 
Yes, ma'am. And, and and one thing I love about the content as well is that, you know, you probably know in Rwanda, you have college educated people that are so smart that, mm -hmm. you know, just want to work with you. Or, man, I always say black Americans, if you go to the continent, go there, not looking for a job, but go there, create a business. Yes. And then hire the locals. Like I said, that's yes. your best interest into the continent. People mm -hmm. respect you. They see mm -hmm. what you're doing. They see you not just coming to take something, but mm -hmm. you come to give as well. Yes. 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 And I do think that um, there's a uniqueness to who we are. And once again, like I said, you don't like when I, for me, I know my story. When mm -hmm. I was in the States and I have nothing against anything, but I was so busy working and trying to make things happen. And what we don't realize is that we tend to have a different type of grind and hustle because it's so ingrained in us that we have to think so strategically to be so many steps ahead, to look out to the horizon, to be prepared. Um, we have to have almost a survivalist at, um, mentality in order to make things happen. I know that I have to be able to, you know, talk and negotiate here or be able to do these things or have this kind of knowledge and i say that because we do this not even knowing and so when we now move ourselves internationally we naturally run and work at a pace that sometimes shocks other people and so what's happened is is that we just have that that oomph and that 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 I don't know what to say that, oomph, you know, but uh, we have mm -hmm. that. And so when you come to the continent, you can change your perspective because we're looking usually to be employed to now you can turn around and say, wait a minute, I do have the skills to be an employer. I have the skills to turn around and put into an economy. I have the skills to turn around and reach out and meet people and make these things and say, these are the things that I want to bring to the table. This is how we can. I have the skills to actually say to people around me, let me train you up and let us work together because we don't have all the answers. We have some, but not all, but let us work together and let's be able to build. Because what I have noticed out here is people just want to, like I hate saying, just want to people. They just want to live. They just want to do. They want to build. They want to create. They want to converse. They want to talk. It's just life. And so what can you turn around and do in order to enhance and empower that portion? And you're right. It is building businesses. It is building those conversations. And it's putting ourselves at the table and letting people know that we are, can do the same things that you sometimes go to other countries to do. Right, right. And, and and that's what, you know, if you look at it, because like that's why I see the opportunities that on the continent is is small business, right? I mean, you can get involved in small business so quick. And, and I tell people if if you're doing something in America, and Akon said it too, if whatever you're doing in America, take it to the continent. Come on. He's saying if you work at it in five years, you could build a four to five hundred company. He's actually right. He's right. Mm -hmm. You can actually do that if you take the time and take the resources. You can do it because what you're going to win at, for the most part, is the labor aspect. Because in America, America kills you with all the, the unemployment and all the different things that they kill you on outside of paying someone a salary, right? Mm -hmm. So so yep. you could you can actually pay decent wages. I'm a firm believer you need to pay your brothers and sisters on the continent. Oh, yes. Good. Don't, don't nickel yes. and dime them. That's wrong. Yes. But, but, yes. but look at, you mean, of course, study the economy, see what the pay is. Mm -hmm. You can easily find that on Salary Explorer, right? Mm -hmm. And say, okay, I'm gonna pay more than this, just to you know, you know, because I, I know from experience, and you know, a job that pays you well, you perform a little bit better mm -hmm. than than a job that pays you nickel and dimes. Mm -hmm. It's about feeling your worth. I mean, mm -hmm. that part is when you talk about things, and I'm, I hear basically, you just want to research, you want to be able to get your feet wet, talk, know, and do, and don't work in walk in assumptions. But in the same aspect. That's one of the things that I think that we just ask is for us to be looked at for the value of who we are right. and don't nickel and dime me. Even with our experiences in the U S it's like, stop treating me like I'm not seeing what I see in front of my face. Don't treat me this way. Treat me with respect. And so if you look at that with salaries or anything, if you authentically just treat people with the respect that they are, the worth, and you do things, people want to turn around and produce and be the best they can. We Everybody is truly looking for a place to flourish. And that's why I said the whole J Essence journey is just about the journey of finding yourself so you can flourish to your best self. And so you must 
operate like that as well. If you're going to come and do a business, operate with the idea of we, we are going to flourish. Not just I, we will flourish. We will build. We will do. We will create. It's a we situation. It is a we. And that's the language that, that I use here in our company. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I tell everyone that, you know, works with us, Hey, I greatly appreciate you, you know, without y'all, you know, we, we wouldn't have, you know, the, the growth and expansion and you got to appreciate your people and also take care of them, you know? And, and I believe that you do that. God will bless you. You know, you ain't mm-hmm. gotta be hoarding nothing, nothing out here, mm-hmm. you know? And, and I've seen it from personal experience that the more you give, the more you get back. I've seen it. Mm. It's the truth. There we go. Yeah, and you can't dispute your truth. No, no, no. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you you got you got to be a more of a given because in America they teach you to be selfish, hoard everything, like yep. forget them, and I'm not gonna help. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I'm gonna say help when you can. You know, mm-hmm. even people in America they may ask for my help sometime, and and I'm like, shoot, I'll just go ahead and do it. You know, I'm not saying I can do it mm-hmm. for everybody, but hey, you know, do your part. And and that's definitely. Mm, that's what we need to do just just as a people just not only you know in a continent here there you know etc so um you're you're tell people how to get to your my cousin you know so they can look okay. into it and uh you have a youtube channel correct yeah so let me go ahead this is let me let me let me throw out the resume for you brother here we go resume all um, right so the very best and easiest way to find me is just j essence journey on youtube and that is where i have chronicled um my life here in rwanda and just different conversations different things and just living in rwanda and those things about it because of the people who have just poured into me on the channel and i like to say like i answer calls I, you know, do things. We came together and created My Cousin Connection, which means that um, it was kind of like that FUBU concept for us by us. So we're going to create our own spaces. And that's where My Cousin Connection comes in. So www, My Cousin Connection. And that is, like I said, the premier hub for Black expats, those looking to come or those already there to turn around and find information we have over 50 articles just telling you about rwanda telling you about what life is like here um giving you estimates of cost of living you know different neighborhoods different things like that we actually have uh care manager services because one thing that was really really important and vital to me is a lot of people are coming over to the continent and do you have someone who knows your medical concerns do you have someone who can look out for you do you have someone who checks in on you um there was a situation where a brother passed away um rest his soul um in south africa um during COVID, and because of everybody locked down people didn't know and he was a big part of the expat community and so there's a way for us to actually watch out and look out for each other to make sure things are okay so we have that part as well with my cousin connection that we have care managers that help you get acclimated want you to become um, sufficient but we support you in those process doing um translation services at the banks or anything just to get you situated and so my cousin connection right there my cousin connection.com but that's what we really work on in trying to build that and we built that for rwanda all right so you know ladies and gentlemen i want to make sure that you we'll put the the information below in that pinned comment make sure you go to my cousin connection and also we'll put her her youtube channel so you could subscribe check out our sister's videos to save you some time because this is what i like to do if i go to any other country Mm -hmm. i go look at expat videos i watch everybody's expat videos to get some research on top of doing my, you know, other mm-hmm. research that I normally do. So they will save you the trouble sometimes, <laughs> uh, not getting into certain trouble. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're in different countries. So, uh, sister, we definitely thank you for joining us on the show today. And, you know, you be blessed out there in Rwanda and, uh, you know, definitely stay away from that Delta variant. Oh, oh, it's happening. Trust and believe mask up everything and fo- social distance. Don't don't need it don't need it don't want it so i'm staying away and staying safe all right take care